morning and welcome to this week. Sabotage. Was Malaysia Flight 370 hijacked? Did a pilot bring it down? More than a week after the plane vanished, investigators zero in on foul play. As the massive search continues this morning, we have all the breaking news from our global team. Also developing right now, Russian troops mass on the Ukrainian border before today's key vote in Crimea. Will they invade Ukraine and split the country? We're live on the ground with the latest on the showdown between Putin and the West. Plus, we won this. The GOP's warning shot in Florida. What is it like to be the last black president? Seriously? Didn't and the really president's health care hangover. All that Bill Gates and the powerhouse roundtable right here this Sunday morning. From ABC News, this week with George Stephanopoulos starts now. From the moment Malaysia Flight 370 signed off with a simple good night, it's been a mystery. Solving it now, a worldwide criminal investigation. Intense focus this morning on the pilots, but with no sign of motive, no claim of responsibility, nothing is being ruled out. And just hours ago, the Malaysian Defense Minister revealed that the search zone is actually expanding. So many questions this morning, and our team of correspondents and experts have all the latest details and analysis, starting with ABC's David Curley in Washington. Good morning, David. George, this map released by the Malaysian officials shows the possible arc locations of where Flight 370 sent its last hourly transmission, which we now know happened more than seven hours after initial takeoff. Malaysian officials say they're searching both of these areas, both of these arcs, north and south, equally. But according to two sources close to the investigation who have talked to ABC News, searchers will intently focus on the area off Western Australia. Their hunt for this missing aircraft is a search area of at least 1,200 miles. Nine days and counting, and still no physical sign of Malaysian Air Flight 370. But this weekend, confirmation from the Malaysian government that this mysterious disappearance was almost certainly no accident. These movements are consistent with deliberate action. The Prime Minister confirming the report by ABC News that communications gear was deliberately shut down. Now we have learned from a source close to the investigation that whoever was controlling the plane pre-programmed that sharp left turn right off of the flight path, convincing investigators that someone was in control of the jetliner, either a rogue pilot or a hijacker. Someone taking command of this airplane or already having command and going rogue. And I'm afraid the, the intent obviously is lethal. Malaysian military radar confirming that the plane did fly back over the country. But then what? Hourly satellite pings from the plane, which we just learned can't be turned off, now showing that Flight 370 made another turn before flying at least another six hours, far longer than first thought. But which direction did it turn? If it flew to the north, that would take it over land towards Kazakhstan. Sources view this scenario as highly unlikely. But to the south is open water, no radar over the Indian Ocean, with depths of up to 15,000 feet. And beyond that, Australia. A source close to the investigation tells ABC News that's where the search will be concentrated. We're going to have to have some luck to find this aircraft. The search area is so gigantic. And what then? Did the plane run out of fuel before crashing into the ocean? Or more far-fetched, but still possible, did the plane land somewhere under the cover of darkness? It's all consistent with somebody who wanted to simply vanish from the face of the earth and make sure that the ultimate crash site uh, was never found. So while the search will have a higher profile here west of Australia in the southern Indian Ocean, all those moves to shut off cockpit communication systems, the major changes of direction, all those things are bringing new scrutiny to the two pilots. George? Okay, thanks. And we want to get more on that criminal investigation right now from our senior justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas. He's in Washington as well. Good morning, Pierre. Good morning, George. Finding everything there is to know about the pilots is clearly a top priority. More than a week after the plane's disappearance, authorities searched the homes of the captain and co-pilot of the now infamous Malaysia Airlines flight. I was shocked that they waited so many days to do it. Malaysian authorities confirmed they are still investigating all passengers. Sources tell ABC News these two men are one of the primary focuses of this early international investigation. The reason? Authorities say the plane did a series of maneuvers and there may have been an attempt to avoid radar. So far, U.S. intelligence have found no evidence any of the other passengers or crew had any flight training or skill. I look at the pilots first, obviously. They're in the cockpit. I get their information. But given the lack of information we have, 
Then I would start looking at who else is on the airplane. There's an urgent effort to see whether the pilots had any ties to extremists or any personal, financial, or psychological issues that could have made them commandeer the plane. You do sort of an initial assessment of their life, uh, religion, uh, athletics, social events, social clubs. In other words, how do they spend their time? But there are still many questions. The captain is described as a family man who worked for charity, someone who would never hurt passengers and authorities have to resolve whether one of the passengers could have forced one of the pilots to hijack the plane or had flight training they have yet to uncover. Pilots have been accused of intentionally downing planes before. U.S. investigators concluded a co-pilot of an Egypt air flight intentionally rammed the plane into the Atlantic Ocean in 1999. In 1997, a pilot from Singapore was accused of crashing his plane into a river. The U.S. investigation has not yet found anyone on board who had ties to terrorist organizations. And sources point out that once the plane was redirected, whoever took control had ample opportunity to crash a huge aircraft into populated areas and did not. There are now questions about why it took so long to search the homes of the pilots. And George, the FBI still has not been invited inside the country to help.